out of all the coal that is mined each year, the LMS alone uses five and a half million tonnes. It is the railwayman's duty to see that every shovelful of that coal is turned into steam. One man in particular can do it, the fireman. He can do it only by methodical firing, controlled firing as it is called. Controlled firing enables a fireman to control his fire to cut out waste and ensure a good head of steam. By no means a new thing, it is the old fireman's motto, little and often, plus how little and how often. All the time the regulator is open, coal will be wanted on the firebed. The first thing to find out is if coal is needed, and if it is, where it is needed. If not already known, this is easily found out. The amount of coal needed by a class five varies between four and six shovels full, spread where they are needed. And here they are. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Between four and six shovels full is the amount. What about how often? Adjust the fire hole doors until the smoke is light gray. By the time the smoke disappears, which is in about two minutes, it is time to fire again. That is how often. The smoke has gone, so two minutes have passed. It is time to fire again. When taking a run at a gradient, or making up for lost time, the driver uses more steam. This is no reason for the farmer to start shoveling coal on. Little and often, still holds good. Wait until the smoke has gone, that's about two minutes, and then, because more steam is being used, Fire a little more than four to six shovels full. One extra shovel full is probably more than enough. If one extra shovel full does not keep the gauge up, then, in two minutes' time, when the smoke dies out, two shovels full extra should do it. Having discovered what to do, we will now find out why. For combustion, coal and air are needed. First, let us consider coal. In a lump of coal, in every ten parts, one part is ash, which will not burn. Six parts are carbon, which burn directly to provide half the heat that the coal gives out. The other three parts are volatile matter, which, heated, turn to invisible gases. As the gases burn, they provide the other half of the heat in the coal. The parts are not neatly arranged in the lump, but they are mixed. However, it is easier to see what goes on if the parts are separated. Now, before the coal will burn, air is needed. It is apparent that the carbon burns directly. The volatiles turn to invisible gases which burn above the coal. It is therefore common sense to provide two air flows. The one from below to burn the carbon, called primary air. The one above to burn the gases, called secondary air. If the secondary air is cut down, there will be too little to burn all the volatile gases from which half the heat comes. Only partly burnt, they give rise to black smoke, which is thus a sign of waste. Too much secondary air sweeps the volatile gases away before they have time to burn. The gases are invisible, so no smoke at all is a sign of waste. But when the airflow just suits the amount of volatile gases given off, the telltale of very light grey smoke 
will show there is no waste. The rate at which the coal burns away is partly determined by its size. It is said that no lump should be larger than a man's fist. Let us find out why. This is a large lump of coal. Now, split it into parts the size of a man's fist. Four more surfaces are exposed to the burning and the volatile gases are produced in greater volume. If the coal is broken smaller still, there will be more volatiles than the air supply can cope with, giving dense black smoke. And when the air supply is increased, the coal burns away very quickly. Whenever the regulator is closed, steam is not being used. The air supply to the fire must therefore be cut down so that coal shall not burn to waste. Where stops can be anticipated, it is only common sense to keep the water level low. If this is done, instead of steam blowing to waste at a halt, it can be used for injecting water. When moving off, fresh coal would only cool the fire down. All that should be done is to open the dampers and shut off the injector. Normally, no coal should be fired for quite two minutes. Now let us consider how the coal and air combine in the firebox. The primary air comes through the two dampers, front and rear. The secondary air comes through the firehole door. About every two minutes, enough coal is fired to maintain the gauge. This coal, becoming hot, gives off volatiles, which burn chiefly in the secondary air. When this is correctly adjusted, the volatiles are all burnt, giving a tinge of smoke at the chimney. If the tubes are blocked, both air flows will suffer. The bed of the fire, the carbon, dies down for want of primary air. And for want of secondary air, the volatiles are only partly burnt and they escape along the tubes as black smoke. It is important to keep the smoke box ring clean because if the smoke box door does not fit closely, the effect of the blast is partly destroyed by air leaks. Here in a drawing, it is apparent how air leaks reduce the smoke box vacuum thus cutting down both primary and secondary air and having the same effect, black smoke. Smoke means that there is not enough air for the amount of volatiles. If the air supply is increased, it should die down. If all the air possible is provided, but too much coal is fired at a time, it will only go to waste as black smoke. When more steam is used, the engine is doing more work and it provides its own extra air. This is because using more steam means more exhaust, which makes a fiercer blast. Thus, the fire can stand a little more coal, a little more. If you suppose that a lot of coal at one firing gives you a lot of heat quickly, you're wrong. And this is why. When you make the fire bed thicker, it restricts the airflow. So the extra carbon has less air to burn it and actually deadens the firebed. The extra volatiles, also short of air, go up the chimney as smoke. So much air can only burn so much coal. Thick patches of coal deflect the airflow and starve themselves of air. The thick patch thus behaves like a thick bed. Big lumps are only a different kind of thick patch and have the same effect. 
the increased draft on the rest of the far bed soon leads to thin patches. These patches very rapidly pull into holes. Through the holes, the air rushes unwarmed and strikes the tube plate. Distortion and even fracture of the tubes and the tube plate is the result. So much for excess of primary air, now for secondary air. Too much secondary air is shown by no smoke. The means of guarding against it is to close the fire hole doors until smoke is just visible. While considering the fire hole doors, there is a further case, not of too much secondary air, but of badly directed air. If due to, well, if as sometimes happens, the baffle plate becomes tilted up, the secondary air crosses the upper firebox unwarmed by the brick arch and sweeps all the volatiles away unburnt. Even worse, it strains the tube plate. These errors will be avoided if the fireman has his fire under control. Little and often is the way to add coal, but little and always for water. If the water is provided too quickly, it will flood the boiler. If too little or none is injected, the firebox crown may be uncovered with disastrous results. Very little experience teaches the settings at which the water level can be kept constant. So much for the why and wherefore of controlling a fire. Ever since the first engines, those firemen who used their heads to save their arms fired, as they said, little and often. Everyone can very well do the same by practicing controlled firing, which, after all, is the road to economy with ease.